This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys, quick and dirty tips to work less and do more. Millennials rock. When I talk to my millennial friends, one of their common things is change, and change for the better. Social change, political change, environmental change, and since they're college graduates, spare change. After all, they have tons of student debt and are underemployed in the soul-sucking exploitation machine called the gig economy. In their pursuit of changing the world, they're just like Thomas, Europa's 16-year-old cybernetic son who has an IQ of 420. He's the smartest person in the room, always. He always has the right answer, right away. He and his high school robotics team are starting their own company to build autonomous surgical robotic teddy bears. They envision a glorious future when the streets are full of scalpel-wielding teddy bears marching forth to, to, to remove appendixes, I guess. Thomas wants them to build in strong privacy controls, but the rest of the team is refusing. They say it'll take too long and it'll be too expensive. And besides, the first robotics championships don't grade the competitors on privacy. Oh, Thomas groans and he goes back to his bedroom to sulk. And he never persuades anyone of anything, even though he's right. Because what he hasn't realized yet is that being right has nothing to do with being taken seriously. Don't start by being right. If you want to be taken seriously, don't start off trying to prove you're right. No one cares. No. No, really. No one cares. When someone on the internet argues with you and tries to prove that they're right, do you care? Of course not. In fact, if you disagree, you not only don't care that they're right, you only care that you're right and they have to be wrong. Welcome to the human brain. Once we believe something, when our belief is challenged, we try to discredit the challenger. We don't care if the challenger is right. So if you're the challenger trying to change people's minds, being right is wrong. Don't be righteous. But my concerns are important, cries Thomas with a degree of angst and melodrama possible only for a 420 IQ teenager. They don't understand the deep implications for democracy of autonomous surgical teddies unaccompanied by strict privacy protocols. That makes them bad, while I am committed to the forces of good and am the only one trying to do right. OMG, Thomas, do not say that to your group. Do not. If being right is wrong, being righteous is deadly. If you want to damage your case beyond repair, just get righteous about it. Saying, I'm right, challenges people's beliefs, but being righteous challenges their identity. It's like saying, I'm right, with a nice thick layer of, plus I'm smart, attractive, and moral, while you're a brain-challenged ugly duckling on top. Persuasion starts with identity and emotion, not logic. When someone feels listened to and valued, when they feel affirmed and secure in their own identity, then they will consider adopting, or maybe just listening to, your ideas. Self-affirmation theory, which you can look up on Wikipedia, tells us that when people feel secure in themselves, they'll be more open to new ideas. So start any persuasion campaign by asking people about themselves. What's important to them? Why do they hold their current opinions? You need to ask with genuine curiosity and be open to the answer. At this stage, you just want them to feel grounded in their own sense of identity, their own values, and their own reasoning. Listen for criteria. While they're answering your questions, listen for the words that represent their values or their decision-making criteria. So Thomas asks his work group, tell me what's important to you about this project. And his teammates say, surgical teddies will revolutionize child rearing. And getting our robot done fast will help us win the competition. He doesn't try to argue or engage their points intellectually. He just listens for what's important to them while letting them get grounded in their own values. The values that his teammates' answers reveal are revolutionizing child rearing, speed of development, and winning the competition. Next, double-check your understanding by repeating back the values and concerns that you heard and watch their reaction. It sounds like revolutionizing child rearing, finishing fast, and winning are your top concerns? If they cringe, throw up their hands in the sign of a cross and hiss fire at you and proclaim, No, you are wrong, you spawn of absolute evil, then you're probably off the mark. So then ask, Hmm, can you help me understand? And go back to listening, but listening, again, for the values. Now that they're secure in their identity, assuming that they have agreed with your recap, it's time to introduce your ideas. But first make sure that you are centered and calm yourself. Take three deep breaths and think about what your values are around the thing that you're trying to persuade them of. 
This grounds you in your identity, which will keep you open-minded too. Of course, you won't need it because you're right, but it can't hurt, right? Of course not. And finally, reflect back their values and just add your own. Now, you're not agreeing to do what they want. You're just reflecting back what you've heard. This is called empathy. You're concerned about revolutionizing child-rearing, finishing fast, and winning. Now, I'm also concerned about privacy and how we can integrate that. Would you mind if we explore that idea? You're asking for permission to explore. If they don't want to, you won't waste your time banging your head against their brick wall. But if they agree, that's the start of building a commitment to hearing you out. The more they spoke, the more Thomas's teammates began to realize that privacy was important. Not only did it show respect for the users of the surgical teddy, but it made the product HIPAA compliant, thus opening up the possibility of being funded by insurance. Once again, a business does the right thing for the wrong reason. Thomas may change the world through teddy bears, but all the same principles apply whether you want your team to consider your ideas or whether you want the world to value your ethnic identity. It isn't fair that we have to persuade and listen to people when our answers are obviously right or when we're already getting the short end of the stick, but it is reality. To change the world, connect emotionally first. Ask and listen to them, not because you care, but because it grounds them and their identity so that they can listen to you. But you know what? Try caring. It's good. Notice their values and criteria and reflect those back. And then gently add your own and invite them to a discussion. You never know where you'll end up, but you'll have a much greater chance of making change. Social, political, or spare. I'm Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. If you're self-employed or you run a small business and you want to finish certain tasks or projects more quickly, check out my Get It Done groups. They provide support and accountability for blasting through your blocks. Learn more at getitdonegroups.com or join my personal email list by texting Get It Done to 33444. Plus, you'll get a free copy of my secret book chapter on how to build relationships that help you succeed. Work less, do more, and have a great life. <laughs>